and good morning. Welcome back to the art studio and um, for another lesson uh, today, as I said in my video on my website, that we are today focusing on the beauty of British birds or birds of paradise as I've, uh, as I've named them. Um, as you are aware, there are so many beautiful birds in this country. Perhaps we take them for granted normally, but in this time, uh, when we've got a bit more time to look around us, uh, we notice these things a bit more. We can hear them in the morning. I can hear them uh, with the dawn chorus through my bedroom window in the morning, waking me up, which is absolutely lovely. These things give us so much joy, even if sometimes we don't realise it. So uh, what I thought we would do today is work on some pictures of British birds. However, if you want to work on a different type of bird from another country that means something to you or that you just think is absolutely gorgeous, then please do that as well. I drew a bird um, last, uh, well, this week, a, a jay. Um, which I really enjoyed. I've not actually seen a bird, uh, one of these birds, in the wild, but um, if anyone has, let me know, because I'd be interested to know where you saw it. Um, okay, so I'm going to be doing the same sort of thing that I've done previously, which is to draw another bird uh, using watercolour background by doing a bit of splattering. And then over the top, I'm going to draw, when it's a bit drier, I'm going to draw that bird uh, as an outline in pencil before working back in with colour pencil as well uh, to bring it out of the background. Um, so uh, if you get to the stage a bit later on where you think, oh no, that white's not coming out enough or I need to make that colour stand out a bit more, then what I did on my picture of my Jane, you'll see it in the video, is I added some white paint to bring out the uh, the highlights on some of those feathers as well. So try that as well because it is, you know, um, when you're using media you say, oh I'm doing a pencil drawing or a colour pencil drawing or a painting. It doesn't mean that you can't pick up other materials and throw those in there as well if it gets you to where you want to be with your piece of work. So enjoy just like picking up the materials and trying out different things if that's what you want to do. Um, so uh, when you're drawing out your bird today, the first thing to remember is to measure out the proportions correctly. So look at the proportions between the head and the rest of the body. So measure the body with your pencil on the photo and then compare it with the rest of it. So you're measuring how many heads fit into the length of the body. OK, and that will give you an idea of sizes and then indeed use those sizes to measure the width of the body, uh, the height of the body from the branch, if it's on a branch and so forth. So measuring out those. Hope everyone is well and happy this morning. Hello Sasha, good to see you, my lovely sister. Hi Pat, good morning, good morning, good morning.
Right, okay. I'm going to start now, I think. I think there's a few people here, a few people showing up. Got 14 people in at the moment, which is lovely. Okay, so this was my picture that I did uh, the other day. My picture of a J. Just trying to line it all up so that everyone can see. See if I can bring this up a little bit. And we'll zoom in as we go. Right, so um, so this was my picture of the J that I did. I think most of you have seen that already. Um, so I have used a mixture here of watercolour and pencil. Uh, colour pencil over the top and then as I said just a few minutes ago in my video I've also used um, a little bit of white um, acrylic acrylic paint uh, that was just to sort of boost a bit of the, the colour on there as well so um, again the other things that I used same as what we did when I think it was the cakes that we did a few weeks ago I've got a blender just here as well and I've got a burnisher okay so obviously this uh, blender will help you to mix those colors together uh, if you've got one um, and a burnisher sort of polishes those colors off a little bit as well okay but as I've said previously you can use um, like a white pencil to do that as well um, this is actually grey, this is a felt grey that I was thinking about using today, but you could use a bit of white as well. So it will be about layering colours on. Uh, and as if you saw the video of me doing the J before, then you'll remember I used some black and white pen in, say, the eyes, on the beak, and on these lovely bright blue feathers here, which I didn't get quite as bright, but it still looked pretty effective. I wanted to keep the colours just as soft as the rest of it um, of the picture as well all right so um, I'm going to be doing today I'm going to be doing this beautiful picture of this um, owl so it's called um, I believe it's called a little owl um, and it's one of the most commonly seen owls in the UK which um, I, I didn't I wouldn't have thought that but um, Apparently they are introduced by the uh, Victorians, these owls. So I thought that was quite interesting, a little bit of history with that owl as well. Um, <clears throat> apparently you find them a lot in Wales and things as well. Um, so what I've done so far this morning is I've, I've created this background and I've sketched out the main sort of shapes of my owl. But um, what I thought I would do first is do a quick sort of uh, real-time demonstration, if you like, um, because the demonstration that I put online is all speeded up. Um, there's lots of slightly uh, different ways of doing this. This particular background, I've done um, a lot of splattering with my brush and then blotting off with a nice J cloth as well. Uh, and that sort of helps suck up a bit of the water a bit quicker. Um, if you're starting this now uh, and you haven't yet created a background, the thing to do is stick it on a heater for a few minutes. Um, I've got like an, a little radiator in my room, in my garage studio here. So I just put it on there for about five minutes and it dried it off really quickly so I can get started a bit quicker as well. Okay, um, with the J, what I did is... Um, you can see there's areas on here which have got nothing on whatsoever. It's because of what I do first is I put little bits of water down and then I just put 
watercolour into it so that and then that gradually spread it out without going on spread out without going on to the white areas which were left dry okay right let's just have a look yeah I know yeah there's no <laughs> there's no there's no sun Mary is there no but um, yeah use, use a heater hi Dominica Um, if you do miss any of the uh, the stuff that I'm talking about today, then you, you will be able to watch this again, either on Facebook or I'll post it on my website a bit later on. But everything I'm doing now is actually on the video on my website as well. So you can more or less get an idea of what we're doing if you've missed anything so far. Hi Leslie, good morning. Yeah, I know, watercolour. Yeah, I don't do a lot of watercolour either, um, Nell, but uh, sometimes it's very, I find it very useful for things like uh, backgrounds and stuff like that. OK, so anyway, I'm going to do a quick background on this blank sheet of paper just here. Um, so obviously with watercolour, you need to have a few brushes available and some water because it goes well with watercolor obviously um, so this is what I did the other day and this morning is I just literally quite loosely I mean you can think in terms of a pattern if you want to but basically I just sort of daub water around the area that I would like to be the background so if you want um, sort of a white border around the outside of your drawing or indeed you've just chosen a specific area of the paper that you would like to draw on with watercolour then um, just do it in that area I'm doing it in the centre here because what I plan to do with my owl anyway is to um, put it in the specific area on the background in, in the centre there so I'm just sort of daubing it over it will pool uh, in some places but that's okay, you can uh, just suck it up with a little bit of um, J cloth a bit later. So I've got all these kind of areas of really wet water on there. And then <clears throat> what you do next is you get your watercolours. And so let's go for a, a greeny background. And you just put the water, uh, sorry, the watercolour in some of the areas I mean you don't have to be too precise but just sort of dab it around a little bit be quite loose and free with it this is the fun part and it breaks the ice with a piece of paper as well which is a lot of fun it's quite you'll you'll think that the color perhaps is a bit strong to begin with um, but once you start to spread it out with your brush it'll um, lighten up anyway and when it dries it will lighten up too so there's a little bit of blue in there now get some of this lighter blue and what I did is a lot of splattering as well and this just makes a lovely surface to work back over with your colour pencils and as I said in the in the video it will I um, can't remember what I was going to say now got distracted by the colour I'll think of it in a minute anyway I'm sort of daubing it around you can see how the colours if you, when you put the colours next to each other because of the water they start to blend into each other quite nicely like that now what I do, what I could do next, that's quite nice actually, I like that. Um, what you can do next, because when you pick it up obviously it's going to move, so what you can do is blot off some of the puddly bits of water as well. So I'm going to do that now. So you can use like a um, kitchen roll or something like that, anything that absorbs. I'm just using this because it's like pretty available but basically I'm not smashing it like this I'm just 
sucking it up with a little bit of um, J cloth and that just removes some of it. It allows you as well to then come back to it as well and say oh no I'm going to put a bit more colour on here or indeed you could do a bit of splattering with a brush as well. Uh, just soaking it up. Still quite a bit on there. That's okay. So you can see that some areas are, have been left white because I've only daubed water on at the beginning or um, brushed it on. So you get this kind of nice effect that might suggest leaves or something like that. Blurry leaves in the background, something like that. I quite like to work over. Um, so um, the other thing I said I would show is perhaps a little bit of splattering. So here I'm going to use my finger just to sort of do this. <laughs> this is fun and it just creates a little bit of energy and spontaneity within that as well. You'll find that some of those splatters will merge in with what you've already done to. So I'm not going to do too much more on this one. The other way to create a splatter is to put a bit more water on your brush and put your finger out and tap it and that will create much bolder splatters and things as well. Some of those are a little bit bright so you get your J cloth back out again and you can just take some of that colour back off if you want to or you can leave it. It's quite nice to have some darker areas showing sometimes. Oh hello Ollie, good to see you this morning or not see you but know that you're here. <laughs> you having a go as well at drawing a bird? Uh, right. Sorry to hear your printer's not working very well. It sounds like you need some more ink, Mary. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Karen. All right, Anne. Ah, Sonia, you're working, but listening very good. I suppose you're doing some teaching work this morning like my wife Sophie. Right there we go so uh, I've created this background which I could use to put uh, a different bird on and things. Um, as I said it doesn't take very long to dry if you just put it on to a heater or radiator or something like that. I've got it on in my garage this morning because it's um, it's not as sunny and warm as it was before. Um, so there's that. Now I'm gonna. You'll see here that my background for this owl is quite light. You'll find that some of the colours will lighten off when the background dries a little bit. I'll, I'll perhaps bring this back later and show you. See how it looks. Okie dokie. Right. Just put my light on. There we go. Okay, so um, we've done the background now. If you've got any questions on, on that, please ask. Um, I'm happy to sort of talk about that a little bit more, of course. So it will be cracking on with some pencil work next. So what I do when I start off is I just grab a handful of colours that I think might be useful. They, they might not all be useful but um, usually what I do is I just grab some so that I've got them available uh, because as you'll see, uh, as you've seen with the cakey one that we did before, I tend to have loads of colours in my hand and I swap between as I go. Um, and that just allows for a bit more uh, workflow, I suppose. 
just adjust this slightly. So I can get straight onto the bird. There we go. Just try and see. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Sorry, uh, Jan, I didn't see your comment. My comment, um, my computer just went off. Um, but that's it. Also, a very good idea and very quick idea is using a hairdryer, and that's actually something we do all the time at school as well. Okay. So let's have a look at. Um my owl. Uh, the official name of this owl is Robin, apparently, <laughs> but um, I'm just going to call him uh, Noddy for now. Noddy the owl. Uh, you don't have to do that, obviously. It's just me. Okay. So I do like enjoy starting with the eyes and things. So I'll probably be starting with that this morning. Hi there, uh, Linda. Good morning, good morning. Hi, Prima. All the way in India. Good to see you. Right, okay, so here we go. Just adjust my chair, get a bit higher up. So I'll be starting off with probably some nice dark colours. And as I said before, I don't often use black. I avoid black, but I'm going to use a bit of black. You can see it's uh, it's had its uh, day really. This black, but uh, there's still some left. Otherwise, I'll have to resort to other means. So I hope everyone's well anyway. At, uh, at home and things, or working, or whatever everybody's doing. We were teaching, at, I've been teaching uh, school lessons at home, which has been... Uh, been interesting it's just getting the kids in that's the difficult bit so I'm just gonna start off by putting in some eyes so I won't use very much black Actually, that's an interesting thing. One of his eyes, the pupil is bigger on one side than the other. And I assume that's because of the light. I don't not noticed anything like that before. But that's quite interesting. So I like, always like to start with eyes because it allows me to see a little bit of character and things straight away and also it's a, it's a good way of measuring off different parts of the bird. Oh that was one thing I meant to do actually I'll just quickly do that so when we're drawing out the image that we want to achieve um, <clears throat> the thing to do um, is to start off by using uh, one of the shapes um, that you want to work from. Um, I hope everyone can see this. Yep, 
Okay, so when I drew out the owl a few minutes ago, I started off by sketching out the head shape, okay? Because what I'm going to use is the rest of the, the head to measure off the rest of the body. So from here, look, I can take the bottom of the beak to the top of the head as my measurement. And then it's just about how many of those distances will fit into my drawing. And I can already tell you that it's a couple of heads down the wing and a bit. So you take that measurement and so I can draw perhaps the the angle of and this you know you can change it as you go along but then take that measurement just there and repeat it twice and just a little bit and I've got the length of the wing and hopefully the right angle as well now um, the reason you do it light and loose like this is to give you the opportunity to make alterations as you go along so the other thing I could do look is I could measure the width of the wing against the width of the body so it's almost double perhaps just a little bit more because there's a bit of a wing on the other side there so take that measurement do that and a little bit more and so I'm starting now to get the shapes right and then from there I when I'm drawing in the eyes I'm looking at the distance from one from the side of the head there is about one and a half of the eyeballs so I measure that off my own drawing so the other eye should be somewhere here and then I like to put these beautiful feathers around the top of his eye over the top like that so I've started to work out all the distances and things that I'm going to need to help me form the rest of the picture. So now I know that the measurements are pretty close I can start to work out how to put the rest of it in and make adjustments as I go along. So it, um, I watched a, a little video recently, there was an artist doing a little demonstration. She talked about, you know, you, you might feel disheartened at different points when you're doing a drawing, but it's always worth persevering right to the end because it's surprising how things can um, work out. Ah yes, um, thank you, uh, Leslie. Yeah, um, I d I thought about that actually using brusho granules um, as the background. Yeah, so brilliant idea. Yeah, just do that if you've got brusho inks or brusho granules, then yeah, you can put those on the surface of the paper and then spray water on the top, um, or put water down and then sprinkle it on top. To create a background. The only thing you might find sometimes with brush o granules is the colour can be so strong, so intense, that it's then hard to work over the top of them. Um, but saying that, you could, you know, when it's dried off and that, you could try putting a bit of acrylic over the top in white just to sort of lift those colours. The other option is, while the paper is wet, um, is to, um, or when it's a bit drier even is just to wash off some of the the strong pigment afterwards because it does it does still react to water even after it's dry so um yeah i yeah you can definitely do that in fact that you know that would be a lot of fun too i didn't use that myself today because i realized most people of course don't have that option at home with brushos but if you've got them use them yeah go for it Right, anyway, so uh, I've sketched out uh, sort of a rough shape there. Um, and then if you sort of do a line going down from the middle of the eye, like this, you can tell where 
the feet are going to be as well. You can also measure using the head of course. One, two and a bit or two and a half. So you can do the same here. One, two and then over here somewhere is where the feet are going to be. Okay, so using measurements to draw out a bird. Alright, so I'm going to continue now with this. If you've got any questions on any of that, then that would be ideal. It's, um, it's about comparing different parts of the body of the birds to others in order to get accuracy, which is exactly what you do when you do, say, a figure drawing or something like that. You measure how many heads high um, the whole of the body, legs and everything is, uh, and that gives you something to work from when you're measuring everything else. Hi there, Govinda. Oh, you didn't get a chance to do your green man. But you finished your painting, though. Oh, yes, I need to have a look at those. Sorry, I've <laughs> been doing my own work recently, so I haven't had a chance to have a look at it yet. But I will do. Will do. Hi there, Chloe. Ah, you're listening now as you're working on your Unit 6 personal statement. Brilliant. Ah, okay. Yeah. So the shops are shut in India as well, <laughs> Prima. That's unfortunate, isn't it? But, um... Yeah, just try watercolour only and maybe work back in with a normal pencil afterwards. You could try that if you've got those. Okay, so I am now going to just crack on with um, this owl. <clears throat> so let's have a look. He's got a lovely sort of shape around his eyes just here, so I'm going to start quite lightly, um, just in case, because I want to make sure that I've got things in the right place before I really commit with colouring in larger areas of the picture of the owl of um, so, so the, the reason I chose this picture actually because um, I did find a few really nice pictures of owls is I chose this one because he's got he's in a really good kind of um, bright well, it looks like quite a, a bright day because we've got the light coming down from this direction and you've got these lovely shadows on his body which gives a good a bit of contrast and creates a you know helps create a bit more of the drama in the picture as well so So don't, um, thanks Nell for posting your picture of the bird that you're doing. If anyone else has uh, got any uh, pictures that they'd like to share of what you're doing today, that would be lovely. It would be really nice to see um, the different types of birds that people have chosen to do as well. So... 
So I'm just using this pencil here to bring in a bit of tone and shadow to help this uh, picture come to life. Which I'm quite enjoying at the moment actually. I've forgotten what I called this owl now. Should have written it down. Noddy, is it Noddy? <laughs> okay, some lovely bits going across here. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Yes, that was it. Noddy. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm looking forward to maybe those garden centres opening up again. Uh, it's not going to be for a few weeks, is it? I have ordered some plants online which has been very good actually from uh, Bosworth's garden centre so it's quite nice actually the way that um, this approach that I've taken because what I can do is you know this owl he's got quite a, a fluffy look to him as well so it's quite nice um, I don't know if I'm close enough but you can put in quite a lot of mark making because um, there is a lot of lovely texture on him um, so I'm using the pencil in a very linear way to put in the texture on this bird and then I can build back over it uh, with some colour pencils in a bit so in effect I've already put in some nice tone of shadow and things put in the top of his head almost like a pair of glasses on him all that fur fur feathers <clears throat> and then in a few minutes I'll probably just start cracking on with putting in some colour um, the nice thing about having a background to work on is when you put the white on as well um, it really brings that white out whereas obviously on white paper which hasn't been manipulated or hasn't got a background on it it doesn't show up as well so these highlights in the eyes and on the on the feathers will look really nice and stand out and give you an impression of how it's looking a bit quicker and it'll be quite nice to put that beak in too because obviously it's a nice strong bold colour too I think his beak's a bit big actually I'll just uh, bring that in Hmm. 
Um, don't forget as well, to if you're sitting, which I suppose most of you are, then to stand up and have a look at it from above as well. Just check things. I haven't quite got the proportions right on uh, his head, but I think I'll get away with that. I'm just putting in some of the shadow under his wing, which is another reason I chose this picture. And under his chest. Sorry, I didn't realise you couldn't see. Hi Davina. Well done for preparing your background paper. picture of this owl shows you just how big he is as well because that's a hand just under there that he's sitting on or a gloved hand anyway so I suppose that's why he's got his name not noddy uh, little owl <laughs> right so mapped out quite a bit gonna start working on his head in just a second so and on my other drawing of this J just here what I did is I worked into the background uh, with a little bit of subtle color or well not so subtle actually but just to sort of um, lift it out of the background a little bit as well so I'll probably do a little bit of that too And the nice thing about this owl is, and there's another reason I chose him, is because he's got all this lovely feathery texture and things, which I quite fancied doing.
All right, so I'll stop. I'll get in with a little bit of uh, white, and he's it's got kind of a, a yellowy tinge to uh, his eyes. Green, actually, a little bit of like a pale green. So I'll put a little bit of those things in there, but because I don't want those colours to be dominant, I don't want them to stand out too much. I'm going to put white in first. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of those colours around here. And then I'm going to add the shadow on it as well. So this is the bit I like doing as well. Just bringing out details like the eyes. And I'll probably use a little bit of um, paint on it if it's necessary. A bit later as well. So, there we are. Plenty of white in there, some around his eyes. A bit on his beak. Some down here as well. A bit down here. Some down here. And then I'm going to add just a bit of yellow. Not so you'd notice too much. And then I'm going to go back in and add some shadows on top, I think. So you put your yellow on. There's a touch of green in there. Quite a luminous green. It's almost took it back to the background colour. And then go back over the top with white. So you're almost sandwiching the white colour with the colours you just put on top. And it just adds a bit of a tinge. Um, and then with this shadow, I think I'm going to try another colour. Mm -hmm. And try a little bit of this Delft Blue. See how that looks. I like to add a bit of fun to shadows if I can. A bit of atmosphere to them perhaps. Let's just have a go and see if that's any good. There we are. Plenty around this one. And then just to tone that down a bit what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of brown in there as well probably and then I can go heavier so you have got to be careful um, with this paper because it's not particularly tough paper as I've said in previous lessons I use this paper because it's nice general paper but it's not the toughest so I've added a bit of shadow in there Now I'm going to stick a bit of brown on, carefully, just to send those shadows a bit darker. And Mars black on top. Now I may get some black paint before I go super dark later, but let's just see how it goes. Adding a bit of oomph to those eyes now. So one thing to make sure you do when you're doing your eyes, same with people, um, with these eyes anyway, 
is um, make sure that your iris and your pupil around are equal um, rather than the iris being slightly off to the side and stuff. I realise not everyone's doing this sort of uh, picture, an owl, in other words. But if you are, then there you go. You just need to make sure that the shape of them come out. So that's given that a lot of depth, and that makes me really kind of inspired to keep going, really, because I can see the owl starting to stand out. So I'm just using a bit of what's this colour? Yellow ochre actually. It's a yellow ochre on top to add the shadows to the sides of the beak. If you remember I put a highlight in the middle of the beak there and that will help that stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to get another yellow I think sort of an orangey colour maybe. Just, to, just a little bit though just to sort of lift it up a little bit. And then I'm going to get back to adding some heavier shadows with this Mars colour. I'm going to put some brown with these a little bit later. But I'm quite interested in how the depth and the shadows can be enhanced at the moment. So I'm just going to keep going with those. I'm really enjoying doing this texture on this hour. It's a great subject. I wonder if anyone's doing a, a red kite. There's so many red kites around these days. Remember when I used to spot one near us? I used to, it used to be quite something. And now you see them everywhere. They're in, introduced to the area, I think, in about 2007, something like that. I remember seeing the first one over at Brigstock Country Park. That was the first one I saw. It was really funny because there was a sign there saying, oh, we've got, um, we've introduced kites. And then I looked up and there was one. Having bird feeders in the garden is a lovely thing to do as well. And a little um, bird bath. We have birds coming in, jumping in there. And I'm just trying to build up a bit of this texture on his head as well. He's got really nice markings on the top. So I thought I'd just whack in a few of those on there as well. Getting lighter as they come down towards the beak area. Ah, great. <laughs> and you're doing a red kite, that's superb. Yeah, they hover around our way quite a lot as well. Um, yeah, at the um, Denford, the Denford group, we went round somebody's house and they, they've got them in their back garden and they put some chicken out for them and they came, they, they, uh, they came right down and, and just swooped down and grabbed the chicken and, and dived off with it, you know, it's, they're amazing birds, they're really big aren't they as well. Great things to see. It's nice that we have these big birds as well as the lots of the smaller ones as well. I was wondering if anyone had, I mentioned it earlier, I was wondering if anyone had ever seen a jay, like the one that I've drawn. I don't think I've ever seen one, not that I'm aware of. You know, sometimes you see these things and you don't, you don't take it in or you don't realise what you're looking at. 
I did spot last week when I was out for my run I spotted a coal tit and uh, listened to its its uh, call and listened to that on <laughs> on YouTube just typed it in and realized that I, I had actually seen one which was which is good I'm sure lots of people I'm sure that's a more common bird but if you don't know what you're looking for sometimes you don't think about it Oh great, so people have seen have seen them. And Jude, if you've got them near us and they're really noisy, is that is that the kites or is it a jay that you're talking about? Yeah, you see plenty of blue tits. I think they're really gorgeous blue tits, aren't they, Chloe? that blue around these areas and then going back in Do white now I'm gonna add some browns and things I think so I've got this Van Dyke Brown great name So I'll be using a white pencil at the same time and then perhaps I'll, st I'll do a bit of blending if I need to as well. It's not always necessary to use a blender and a burnisher. Um, I may use that in the background in a little bit though. So there's my white and a few colours. So I'm just going to start by adding in some yellowy colour which I can see around here so I'm just putting in like um, a bit like I've already done with the with the darker color a minute ago I'm just doing hatching really just to sort of maintain a bit of that texture and I'll probably start then blending stuff in as I go along so as you can see I'm using the colors and 
the pencil colours quite broadly so I'm applying colour to different areas of the picture so I'm kind of revealing the image a little bit by just applying colour here and there as I go along and this kind of softer approach allows the paper to sort of do its thing as well rather than obliterating the paper building up too much colour over each other. Well, I'm trying to still do layering but um, without damaging the paper too much mm. So in this particularly dark area there's little bits of blue and it's a bit darker just in there so I'm just going to put in some nice, some of that um, Delft blue in there and it just rather than use using that, I think I had a Mars black didn't I before, rather than use that to create the depth I'm using a blue as it creates a bit more of this kind of atmosphere that I'm looking for. I can always go back over it with a bit of black again or I can use some brown too. Right, and then some of these areas on top I'm going to put some brown into the black so it becomes a nice dark any colour. You don't need to use black but sometimes it's quite nice to do for immediacy. And we've got this warmer brown as well so I need to get more of a reddish sort of brown. So what's this one? This is Venetian. Again I think I used that before. I'll just give it a bit more spice and I've got this champagne there you go there's a good colour got some warmer browns as well and around here so it's a little bit different to when I was doing the cakes before because it's it's about building up layers of texture on top of each other using lots of hatching and line and things This area is a bit dark around here, so um, I'm going to add more colour on this side of the face and I'm following the line of the feathers as well with my marks so you get a sense of the direction that all of the uh, feathers are going in. Using this blue just to send things in a little bit more in places as well. And mixed with the browns it ends up being having quite a bit of depth. 
interest. Yeah, I'll probably add some white acrylic paint over his eyebrows, if that's what they're called. His glasses. Ah, so Jill, you've seen some J's, brilliant. I don't know how big they are, what sort of size they are. I'd love to see one. I would hope that you could see them in um, Earthingborough down at the lakes, actually. <laughs> Wood pigeons, Anne, brilliant. Yeah, they are funny birds, aren't they? My dog absolutely loves um, chasing pigeons it's her pet um, pet thing to do and she sits just watching there's one in the garden now there's she just sits by the back door watching to see when these pigeons are gonna turn up yes the background can be useful as well Ruth to um, help things stand out but yeah also some of the colors uh, can get a little bit dark which is why I was talking a little bit about adding um, using a J cloth just to sort of pull out some of the color that said what you can also do is you could get a little bit of white paint acrylic paint and just do a little bit of a wash or not a wash um, sort of a, a watered down version of the paint just to sort of take those colors away a little bit and then you'll find it easier to work back over or just paint those areas with white paint um, and then um, you can work back over with um, with your pencils depending on how well they work with um, with a, with the acrylics as well so you know sometimes it's just a case of trying a few ideas out I'm going to work into the background I think a little bit around this owl around this owl's head and I've had a little bit more of a play around some of these areas just want to do a bit more around here I think So I 
I'm going to go for a little bit of this around the background. So I can start to just add a little bit more colour into the background. So here I am actually shading directly rather than as I've been doing previously is using lots of line. I'm now just using a pencil to literally shade quite smoothly over the area and then fading out as I go away from the bird. <coughs> coming through from on the board underneath. So you get, I mean, you know, when you put in this colour on, you get a little bit of the, obviously the colours from underneath coming through with background colours and things which is, you know, can be quite effective too. Use a little bit of white on there as well. So now I'm blending white with blue and that smooths things off even more. So you could use a blender to do that as well, or even the burnisher, but sometimes it's nice to get a bit of white in there as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think I need a little bit more. <coughs> Gonna put some more in around here. So by covering over other parts of the picture I can really focus on this detail without getting too distracted <laughs> like I usually am. burnishing some of these colours together a little bit now using this um, champagne I'm going to bring in a few bit more white as well just here Golden brown on 
top of that. Sometimes it's nice to have little accents of colours as long as they don't dominate. Just small amounts of colour just to create a bit more oomph in the picture. Which is why I used the blue earlier. I could probably go a bit darker in some of those areas on the eyes actually. Colours aren't the same in the eyes just here as far as the shadows go anyway but sometimes it's important to remember that you're creating a piece of artwork you're not creating a photograph in some sense an illustration then if you like so adding some colour in is you know makes it a bit more fun I think Your <laughs> great, great wood pigeon names, <laughs> Woody and Buzz, brilliant. Hi Tiana, good morning. Oh right, okay, so you're working at the moment, cool. So I just use the white paint in its purest form, but then loosen it up just a touch with a little tiny bit of water. Let's zoom back out again. Things actually look a little bit different on the filming. <clears throat> but on my picture here, this white, I'd like it to be whiter on his eyebrows because that will just bring it forward in 
line it up a little bit. Around his eyes. So this is just acrylic, white acrylic. So this is where your mixed media starts to come in, which basically means anything where you're mixing different types of media together. So we've got watercolour, pencil and a little bit of acrylic at the moment. So how, allowing yourself a little bit of flexibility when you're working is a really important thing to do. Because it does actually allow you to sort of teach yourself to adapt different situations when you're working and it's good fun so that has just brought that out a little bit I'll put a little bit on his beak as well and there's nothing wrong with painting even putting in some of the fluffier bits of his feathers back over the top of the dark areas just down here and it actually would enhance a little bit those eyes by getting really light areas, white in this case obviously, against the really dark areas of the eyes too. I'm going to put a bit down here while I'm there. There we go. There's a bit of a highlight there as well. Good fun, good fun. Right, okay, so. So now I've put that in there, I think I could just do with getting a bit more of that yellow back in. If I can get it in now, might not be uh, dry enough. I'm just going to put it where that blue is in the shadows. Don't want to go over too much of the white. A, bit, a little bit of colour back into those eyes. So it did get rather white, but we've still got the highlights there as well. Yummy. Okay, so I'm going to work down on this area next. Got some of these nice warm reddish sorts of browns, I guess, down here. So let's try this one, which is called burnt yellow ochre a burnt yellow ochre very nice put some of that in there so I'm back to using my hatching technique for all the fur fur feathers sorry this is ornithology not animals <laughs> never mind 
Okay, there. Oh, yes, I did want to a little bit of white just up this area because I um, painted over that or drew over that with the blue I think it just needs a bit more white up here put that in, let it dry a bit and I'll go back over it in a bit there we go It's interesting how different the picture looks on screen actually. <clears throat> Not quite picking up the colours in the same way. I'll take a photo of him later and hopefully that will show more of the colour when I put him online. So I'm doing this kind of flicking motion here to make the kind of line disappear as it come as it you know fade out but in a kind of fur um there we go again feathery kind of way. Now just here a bit of shadow but I think there's a little bit of blue in there as well so I'm gonna go back to my um Delft blue down there and then add a bit of white on top of it. It'd be nice to have sort of a greyish colour as well if I can find one. Greyish colour. Silver grey or French grey. It's got kind of a warmer sort of colour to it a bit of French grey and some of these feathers. It's quite nice. Lovely. So nice for me to do these sorts of things because it's not something I would normally do uh, for my own work. So this is one reason I really love doing these sessions with you. Is coming on. <coughs> right, I'm going to work over here a little bit for a few minutes. So, again, using this kind of ticking motion all in one direction at the moment. 
create this uh, feeling of the direction of the feathers. So lots of overlapping lines on top of each other. And if you want any particular areas to stand out differently, you just go go nice and dark with those on top, and that gives a bit of contrast between your marks and brings out some of the detail in the feathers. Yummy. Very yummy. There's a bit of grey in this uh, area as well, so I'm going to put that in first. A bit around there. Yeah, that paint's got a bit drying out. Got some bit of yellow ochre, but some more of this kind of grey to create this kind of putty sort of colour up there, and then some darker bits too. Quite nice doing this. I can see the shape of the feathers coming through as I go round these lighter areas. It does need a bit of colour in these feathers as well, these light bits, but I'm going to put that in later or in a bit when I'm ready. So like I was using the black earlier to put general tones in, I could just carry on with this brown but it seems to work quite well over most of the uh, the body in those areas that need it or roughly need it as long as it all goes in the right direction we can build that texture up lovely lovely Thanks now. <coughs> I mean, I am actually enjoying this this owl. I chose him because of the texture, and uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. If the colour's a bit bright, Anne, then what you need to do is tone it down a little bit, 
um, you can work back into it perhaps you could um, do a wash of colour over the top with a bit of watercolour perhaps just to tone things down or indeed just keep mixing your colours in until you get to the stage where you've got it about right so don't you know don't stop there just keep working back over it and trying different things out and I'm sure that you'll get the right colours I mean you know alternatively it might look nice as a as a bright picture sometimes those watercolour pencils there they can come out bright I know that Jan has got these these um, pencils they're ink pencils I believe and uh, if you add those colours are very vivid and bold to really gorgeous colours there's all sorts of amazing materials out these days on the market that you can get there's new stuff coming out it seems all the time which is why when we have our classes we all meet up and people bring different things it's quite nice to see what um, things are available I don't suppose we can buy much of it at the moment all the same it's still nice isn't it to see stuff I went to these um, I went to this art show um, at Water Perry Gardens Art in Action it's called and there they have this they had this huge huge tent it was just people selling art materials and supplies and there was stalls with artists in there as well um, but the great thing about that show wasn't just the materials you could go and look at but it was you could go and actually watch artists working live which is really inspiring and they would talk to you as well and you could ask them questions it did stop for a little while because the chap who organized it decided he needed to retire and so it stopped for a bit but I think it, it does run again now but I haven't been to it since since that point the um, carnival in Earthling Borough this year has been cancelled as well because of all this uh, corona stuff so I'm not sure, I don't think we'll be having the exhibition in September, the art exhibition for all of our work. Um, I'm thinking of trying for Christmas but we'll have to see how it all fits because it would be really nice to see some of your work on display again like we did before. We had a lot of fun displaying the stuff that you've been doing and it really makes a difference just to have it on display and see how lovely it looks and to have people view it as well rather than it staying in the in your sketchbooks or at home in a cupboard somewhere and you know you, on the day of the exhibition there's usually cakes and coffee and everything else so I usually open that up, well, for the last two years anyway, I've opened it up to any of our students taking part. You can bring your work down to the church in Earthling Borough, or the Methodist Church, and display it. I have to say though, I am looking at some of the other places in Earthling Borough that there's this shop that's a unit that's open with, it's all glass on the outside. And I was thinking, wouldn't that be a great place to have an exhibition as well? So, it's just whether they would allow it or not, the owners, I suppose. 
bit of investigation might go might be good on that one all depends if I've got power in there because it is bare walls there's no there's no um, fitted shop or anything Thank you, by the way, for every everyone who's posted. Um, and really, I mean, you've really worked so well and so hard, everybody, on uh, on your green green man sort of project that we just finished doing. I mean, they're they're absolutely superb, and um, it's such a good thing to do to explore layering different media on top of each other, and really, because you really get to see what these materials can actually do. Especially when you start layering over onto different surfaces, it just makes everything very interesting, I think. Really enjoyed seeing them pop up on the stream on the in the group over the last week, so thank you so much for for taking part and um you know it helps everybody to see each other's work and get ideas about what you can do and it spurs you on doesn't it
So when you first put these marks down, they often look, you know, quite rough in a sense, really. Um, and the thing to remember about when you when you put a lot of texture on is that you can then um, also add tone and shadow over larger areas in order to give that shape to the um, the subject. So. Here, look, we can see there's a lot of shadow in this area, which you you know you might not in immediately put in because you're putting all the shadow, all, all the texture on, but then you work back over those areas in order to add the form in terms of not texture but shadow. Seems kind of obvious, I suppose, but um, again, it's about building up those different layers of of colours on top of each other. I think there's a little bit of kind of a greeny colour just under under there or more of a browny greeny colour so I'm going to put in this um, olive earth colour into Noddy's um, feathers just under here. Probably need to go in with a bit more black as well or deep brown anyway. And there's a bit of a highlight here underneath his body. You see where the, the light is coming down and hitting the glove that the, the man has on or the woman has on here. And bounces back up onto the bottom of his body. So you've got a little bit of a highlight coming in there. So let's put something in there. I'm going to add, start with a bit of white in there to ensure... We've got a nice layer of colour underneath. Uh, then I'm going to put in a bit of this Naples yellow in there and then tone that back in again with a bit of uh, golden brown in this case and then perhaps just a bit of white in some areas before. Uh, then we'll add a bit more contrast in here and a little bit of blue so we've got the contrast between the reflected light from the man's glove or woman's glove and then I'm going to add it's still quite this shadow under his body Noddy's body is kind of a greeny tinge, so I'm going to put that in. Here I get my black in there as well. So I may even just put a little bit of green back over the highlight as well, because the highlight itself would have shadow in it so it would be darker in one area and lighter in the other and also the, the highlight does need to be part of the the, uh, the, <laughs> the feathers as well now up here I want to put some of that colour in too on, the, on his body so I want this kind of buff sort of I'm going to use a bit of this champagne. I didn't get any to go on. A bit of yellow. Um, burnt ochre. Maybe. That's kind of it. some grey. So this little tuft just here is actually um, actually where the light has hit the feathers. 
So I'm going to make sure that's nice and bright. So even with white paint, sometimes you'll find that you still need to layer that colour up if you want it to be really bold. So it's a case sometimes of just coming back to, to that, putting it in a bit more. still like to get a bit darker down there so I'm gonna hammer that in with the blue and this burnt umber quite got as far as I want with that yet This wing on the side of his body just here. Put that in. A bit brown with the grey because I've got this kind of what's, what was that grey called again? French grey mixed in with a bit of. Van Dyke brown just there. Uh, I'm gonna, I haven't used it today, but I'm gonna use the blending tool to mix some of that in. Now, in the background of this picture, it's got this lovely yellowy sort of colour, so I think I'd like to a bit of that in there so I know that that's going to be okay basically because yellows and blues and greens all go together quite nicely you'll find them all next to each other on the colour wheel so they're harmonious with each other And as I said, some of that green gets mixed in with the colours that I'm putting down, like I did earlier with the blue. So that's, you know, you get some of those textures from the splatters that we did right at the beginning coming up through. And I'm going to burnish it together with a bit of champagne. Champagne pencil. So I'm mixing really, but. Uh, it burnishes it if you mix it enough, which basically means to make it a shinier colour. Good fun, good fun. cake did I? I think my wife Sophie I think she's she's obviously too distracted with all of her school work. It's a little bit different at her school as far as um, doing work and things goes. The only reason for that is that uh, all of her students are showing up for lessons <laughs> online. Um, I think it's because it's a private school and the parents are quite a bit more insistent obviously them being they're actually paying directly for their lessons and things for the kids so all the students are in the lessons and things so she's doing the whole thing all online and it's quite tough because you have to be ready as you would be at school but it's new as well it being all online so that's why I haven't got any cake I've got some saurine though I'm going to have some saurine in a bit 
There you go, I had go inside and get my saurine. <laughs> So, there we go. I really enjoyed doing this drawing, actually. Please post what you've been up to in today's lesson. I'd love to see how you've been getting on. And I'll try and, uh, obviously, I'll try and let you know what I think and uh, if you need to do anything or if you've got any questions about what you've been up to and you want a bit of help please ask. I shall put this um, video on to the website a bit later on today. So if you want to go back through it on there you can. Although I know that you can watch videos again on Facebook. I don't know how easy it is to do that. I know that it's there though. Right, <laughs> sorry I went a bit quiet there. Um, thank you so much everybody for coming again. We're almost at 12 o'clock already. So I hope I hope you've enjoyed taking part in today's class. Thank you for new people joining as well. Um, you're all welcome. Um, I will be doing another lesson next week at the same time. So um, if you like today and you want to come back, please come back. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about doing big cats next week and little dogs. So it'll be because <laughs> I thought, well, pet, my pet has been just amazing for our well-being during the crisis. And so I thought it's time we pay tribute to our pets or to those 
massive uh, animals like tigers and what have you. Uh, so a little bit of a mixture of things for next week. But um, I hope you've enjoyed taking part today. Um, please post your work and uh, let us know. Let us have a look at what you've been doing. If you don't want to share it, then you can always email it to me because I, you know, I still like to see it. But um, thank you again. Thank you so much. And um, I'll see you um, next lesson. Wow, I, did, I hadn't seen, <laughs> I, I've been so busy with this, um, I can't see my computer screen in front of me all the time, but wow, thank you for posting your pictures already, that's that's really nice, and um, I look forward to seeing some more of them, and perhaps some more work being done on a few of them as well, um, but that's been, re that's really nice, thank you so much, and um, thanks for coming everybody. Right, I'm going to get some cake. See you soon. Bye-bye.